Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you everybody for registering and joining us uh, today. Uh, pretty excited to spend some time with you today talking about uh, irrigation mapping and some of the tools that Juniper Systems has to offer. My name is Doug Moore. I'm the sales manager here at Juniper and uh, with me today also is Trevor Brown, our business development manager. So just really quickly, uh, before we jump into the heart of our discussion about irrigation mapping, I wanna just introduce briefly to all of you who Juniper Systems is. Uh, we're a manufacturer that's been in business for quite a while, based out of Logan, Utah, that builds uh, rugged handheld devices for field data collection and uh, GPS collection. Uh, we build those devices here in the United States, and so we're, we're kind of proud of that, uh, that we assemble these in, in, in the United States and, and have a great team here. Uh, you know, as we do that work, there's a lot of people who end up needing good mapping software. And so we've created Uinta. Uh, it's an outstanding tool. Just so you're aware, this is not our first foray into doing mapping for irrigation. Uh, uh, years ago, we introduced a, a software tool called Juniper Aspect. And that product has been really great for many, many uh, users, but we crossed a line where we needed to move to, to a newer system and uh, newer software. And so with that in mind, uh, we've taken all the things we've learned from years of supporting irrigation folks doing mapping and, and brought you into to the market. Uh, this is a really exciting tool for you to use. And I'm not gonna dig into the details of how we get to, to all these maps right now, but I just wanna give you a, a taste for what we're trying to create. Uh, that picture there on the left kind of shows you all the an example side of what we can do in terms of mapping uh, irrigation systems. And then of course, just you can see there's a very good and simple user interface for collecting that data. And we'll go into more detail on that here in a moment. Before we dive into the software too deep or into the demo, I wanna just discuss a couple things about the software. First of all, currently it runs on Windows 10 uh, and Android is coming soon. Uh, another thing that's kind of cool about the software is it has cloud synchronizing, which basically means you can have multiple users working on one project, gathering data independently and have that data all synced together in the end. So it's really nice uh, if you have multiple people mapping on a large project simultaneously. Now with that cloud sync, some people get worried that that's gonna require a uh, Wi-Fi or cell and we might have problems. That is not a concern at all. Basically, uh, Uinta is capable of running without a Wi-Fi or cellular connection. So even in very remote locations, you can collect that data. And then when you do get back into coverage, Wi-Fi or cellular, otherwise you can at that point uh, synchronize the data uh, with multiple users. Uh, one thing we wanna talk about just for a minute is some hardware. As we mentioned, currently the software runs on Windows 10. Uh, the Mesa 3 that you're seeing here is a device that we bring to the market and something that is certainly worth considering as a tool for data collection in the field, although it is not required. And the reason that we uh, feel so strongly about recommending this device is that it is incredibly rugged, built for outdoor use. This is really something that we're excellent at. Uh, the screen is super easy to see in, in the brightest of sun and uh, it's waterproof and drop proof and just treats you great. So that's something to consider. Uh, in addition to that, one of the other things you need to be thinking about is, is GPS accuracy. Uh, now, with that in mind, we also have a product that can really help there, and that's called our geode. I wanna give you just a quick explanation of what kind of accuracy GPS can do for you. So here we have just a sample image to help you understand that the big blue dot you're seeing there on the left is the accuracy you're gonna get out of your average uh, Android phone or iOS Apple device. Uh, it's about a five meter dot when things are going well. Uh, the geo gives us significantly better accuracy and to give you a better picture of what that really looks like, here's an example with a one meter circle, that yellow circle and those, all those little pink triangles there are different measurements we've taken and you can see that we're all well within that one meter circle for the accuracy. And so you just get a lot better accuracy which results in a lot easier uh, refinding things when you go back. It becomes really important to do that well. So something to consider. Uh, the geode is pretty easy to carry in a variety of ways, just so you can see. You can see, you know, we put it on survey poles, mount it to backpacks, things of that nature. Uh, so there's a variety of ways of carrying it and we can help you with that. Uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the time over to Trevor Brown, who is gonna give you the demo of the software. Great.
Okay, and just to kind of flip over to give you a little bit of an idea of what you'd be looking like when you're out in the field. So I'm gonna give a demo of the software, but remember what Doug was talking about. This is a pretty typical application of how somebody would go around an irrigation site and map their uh, irrigation assets. So in many cases, there's just a survey pole with the geode on top. You see the mesa that the user walking around just uh, quickly mapping all the different irrigation assets, lines and areas, for example, of zones. Um, so once, and there, there's different ways to carry this. Um, it can be carried on a shoulder and a backpack, so you don't have to carry that pole around. But I just wanted to kind of give you a visual to, um, before we jump right into the software. Uh, once somebody launches the software on that tablet, um, they're really going to see a view more like this. So bear with me here. So it's going to look more like this, where you have a tablet view, um, and it's the exact same software that you can install and run on your desktop computer or laptop. So this software you can install, as Doug mentioned, on a Windows 10 device in the office, so on a laptop like that I have going here. And you can also install it on the tablet that's being used in the field for the mapping application. This software is project-based, so you can uh, start basically creating a list of all your different projects. And so these projects could be uh, the types of uh, uh, jobs that you have. There's different ways to group your projects. So for example, if you have a large uh, customer and there's many jobs for that customer for a municipality or something like that nature, you can do that as well. But this, this list can get quite large and we have very nice search capability um, where you can just find your project. So for example, I type four and it's finding any project with uh, four in it. So you can find the projects you're looking for. Um, and so it's a very simple and easy to use software. That was a key uh, uh, objective for us in creating this software and very important to the users because we just recognize that our customers are, are experts at a lot of other things and have a job to do. And we wanted to make this as easy as possible uh, to train your crew and, and we've had a, a very good success with that where typically you know a new user we can train once the software is set up on their device in about five minutes um, and it's important to note as we look through this is that uh, anything you're seeing here this software is meant to be customized so it can, we can create the projects and the things that you're mapping and, uh, to match what's important to you and that's something that you can do for yourself as well. It's uh, very easy to do and you map. And so anything you're gonna see here, uh, and I'll, I'll point these out along the way, are, are things that you can change to reflect the types of work that you do and the, and the way in which you, you do your work. So I wanted to start with just giving you a very kind of simple example of how you went to works, but then also just kind of show you some example projects uh, sent to us from uh, some of our irrigation customers. Okay. so. You have this list of projects. The very first thing you do is you just hit this orange plus button and you have different ways to add projects to this list. You can create the project only on this device or you can create this project as a cloud project. So for example, if I have this project created as a cloud project, it can then synchronize between any software or any user of this software. So for example, somebody in the office, if they have that project on their device, it will, anything, any data collected in the field will then automatically appear in the office. So it's a good way to kind of transfer data and manage projects. Um, if users are offline in the field, it will just synchronize once the uh, internet connection is made with that device. So we're just gonna start by creating a, a simple project. I'm gonna call it a job, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just some generic job name. And then the software, you can, it's very easy to create different templates based on the types of job that you're gonna do. So we have standard ones that are available to use as a starting point, but if you had different things like landscape lighting type work or other maintenance type jobs, um, you can create templates that reflect that type of work, or you may choose to create a template that that includes all of that type of work in one larger template. So we're gonna go ahead and use the irrigation template and I'm gonna create the project and, and it, it's doing its thing, it'll create this project and it just brings you to a map. So, so far all we've done is hit the plus button, give the project a name. The next thing a user would do is connect to their GPS. They can do that by selecting this GPS icon here. And if they're using a high accuracy geode, which is certainly recommended for an irrigation application, 
Uh, then you just much like you pair a, a Bluetooth headset to your device, you would pair the geode through Bluetooth. And there's my geode already in the list. However, I'm inside of a building. So today I'm going to connect to just our, our Wi-Fi network within our factory building. So I'm just going to say connect. And the GPS is connected. You see some basic stats about that GPS. And the first thing you'll notice uh, is that this value up here is your accuracy of your GPS. Because I'm using Wi-Fi, it's a very poor accuracy, just over 300 feet accurate, so not very good. That's pretty typical with Wi-Fi uh, type accuracy. With a geode, uh, you're gonna see, we typically see about one foot, eight inches, 1.5 feet, somewhere in that range, depending on your environment. So, so far we've connected the geode. All I, all I need to do next is when I'm ready to start mapping, I can zoom to my position, here I am at the factory. Um, we'll pretend I'm outside and I'm getting ready to map uh, some irrigation assets. So the first thing I do, I just hit the plus button. And here I'm presented with different areas. For example, non-irrigated property boundary or zones. I can also select irrigation lines, drip lines, lateral, main line, wire. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna map a controller. So we're gonna select a point. And just as I described before, anything you see here, I can add or take away or change what, what's presented in this view. In this case, uh, we'll go ahead and select a controller. And I've just mapped my first controller. Now I've got data with a Wi-Fi network. I need to update, uh, update the GPS position here, but had you been outside mapping, that would be automatically populated. Um, I would then just select a brand. So for example, maybe this is a Rainbird brand, Rainbird controller. Maybe it's a two wire, has uh, five stations, uh, no rain sensor, and maybe you know repair required equals no. Um, if I wanted to take a photo, I can launch the camera and take a photo. It'll always then be associated with this record. So all I do next is save it, and I've got my first controller. So as you see over here, bear with me here, I've got all this information captured. Um, if I was away from that asset, I could navigate to it. It's going to guide me right to that asset within the tolerance of my GPS. And I've mapped my first controller. Now I'm going to jump over. So you kind of see how easy it is to, to map uh, and be successful with this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is jump over to sort of a project that I've pre-populated with some information just for the sake of time, just to show you some other features of the software that are typical for users. Here's just another kind of test example project that I have. Here I've got another controller, a control valve, a lateral, a couple laterals, or a single lateral with a bunch of sprinkler heads on it. If I want to add a new lateral, all I need to do is hit the plus button. And I'm going to select lines, select lateral. There's different ways to add a line. One, you can do it as a track log where it tracks you in either time or distance. But another way and the most popular for irrigation is uh, this manual method because lines typically run straight. And at this point, instead of zooming to my position over here, I'm actually gonna turn off my, my GPS for demonstration purposes. And we're gonna have to kind of pretend that my GPS is connected. And what I'm gonna do then is we'll pretend that this is my blue dot with the GPS and I'm gonna add my first point. I would just select add and the GPS would have added it right at that point, wherever I'm standing. If I walk, if this line's typically running straight, I would then go to the end of the line and hit add again. And now I have a line that's 124.6 feet. I then can, if I, if I wanted to, I could be adding you know, irrigation points along the way and that kind of thing. But at this point, I'm just gonna finish this lateral Enter some information about this lateral. Maybe it's PVC, maybe it's one and a half. Repair required equals yes. Repair reason is that it is leaking. And we'll say save. And just like before, uh, I can also go along and add some sprinkler heads uh, along that lateral if that's the type of work that I'm doing. So again, we're pretending that this is my GPS. Instead of me moving a target, it would be my blue dot. I'm going to add that point, say finish, enter some information about this sprinkler head. Again, we'll call it a rainbird. So anything you see in this screen can be customized very easily, added or taken away. So for example, 
here's all the information in the field types. If I wanted to add something, I can do that or delete those. So if I wanted to just keep Rainbird because that's all we use, then I would keep Rainbird there and, and delete the other models. You know, I can assign this to a specific zone. Um, repair required, we'll also say yes. And the pair reason, maybe it's broken. And we'll go ahead, I probably won't, I won't take any photo of here. I'll say save. And so what we have now is a, you know, we're building out this, this irrigation map. And I wanted to show you some typical use cases that customers would do with this. So in one, one common example is in advance of winning a project, customers will often be asked to go and survey a property to identify all the different assets, the current status and the ads built um, to identify um, what work needs to be done. And so one way that customers use this software is to go out, survey properties, um, much like maybe we've done right here. And then once I'm ready to and completed the survey, I can then export my data quite easily. So I have different ways to export my data. I can export to Excel, for example. And you see your data separated out in, you know, by tab. So here's my sprinkler heads, here's my lateral, control valves, controller. You know, in this case, we've got, uh, looks like we've got seven sprinkler heads. They're all Rainbird. Um, different zones are associated to it. And the repair required status uh, is listed here. And it says the type of, type of reason. So this would help build you an equipment list of the job that needs to be done at this property and help you with your bid uh, proposal to the customer, but also help make you look very professional in the data that you captured. Another very popular way is to export this information to a KML file. So this same information can then be shared with customers in a Google Earth file, for example. And so all of that same data that you captured in the field is then gonna appear uh, right in Google Earth. And, and in Google Earth, see here, it's gonna carry all of those custom attributes that you collected in the field. So there's our sort of example project. And as you see, you can kind of hover over one and see all that data and information you've captured in the field as well. Um, one of the most popular and, and kind of compelling reasons for customers to use this in an irrigation environment is to build these PDF maps as well. You can also go and say, you know, add information to a map. Um, I'll just put some generic information here and add a B there. Um, I can also navigate to my logo. So for example, if I had some specific company logo, I can also write additional attributes. Um, I can go and print that to a larger, larger file type or uh, paper if I liked. And um, there's different types of ways to kind of customize how this works. But here's the pretty basic functionality. It's very easy. You just, it's a what you see is what you get type map that it's going to print. And it's going to give you a map of all of the, the assets that you've uh, gone out and surveyed. And it kind of gives you this legend with all the different things that the customer can see. And if they scroll down, it's going to also give them that information that I shared in the Excel list as well. So it's a nice report you can share with your customers to help uh, win those projects. And once you've won those projects, you can then, uh, you have all of this information, you can give it to the crew that's actually going to go and perform the work. And so there's some really nice filtering functionality. There's a very quick filter here. I can write yes. It's going to show me all the assets that have yes, repair required equals yes. But I can also use more of an advanced filtering type functionality. So for example, I can, let's go find a irrigation points. You can say, show me all of my sprinkler heads where repair required equals yes and apply it. And now you see a list of all your sprinkler heads that have repair required. So somebody can then connect, let me connect to my GPS. It's gonna put me back uh, in the other part of the building. This should work well. I can then select this asset, navigate to this asset, tell me exactly where to go to find it. Give me some information that was performed on the initial survey, for example, about like what, what the asset is, what type of repair it needs, what a picture of it is. Um, and that way I can kind of generate and export this list as well as sort of a work order list. So that's a pretty common way that this software is used. Um, there's a lot of other, you know, all of this information you can also view in a, a list format as well. So there's all my sprinkler heads uh, that uh, have a repair status that equals yes. Or you can go back and view it in your map. These are some of the most common use cases in an irrigation environment. 
And I really wanted to just emphasize one more time that anything you see here, you can make this uh, what you want. So if it is important to see landscape lighting, tree surveys, that kind of thing, you can, uh, you can go and customize very easily there. And we assist you with that. So now I'm gonna kind of just quickly review with you a couple of example projects, uh, a few example projects that customers have sent, sent us to just to show you, uh, instead of more demo type uh, applications, wanted to show you some sort of real world, uh, real, real world, world applications sent to us. So here's a first example. I'm gonna turn off my GPS. There we go. And this is just a large townhome development. As you can see, this customer uh, went out, mapped a lot of the zones, the laterals, the drip lines. Um, looks like they were changing colors of some of their, uh, their lines as well to indicate different types of status. Um, so it's very easy to customize what the labels and icons and colors of are of all of this. Um, so it's, it's a pretty nice looking map, a pretty comprehensive one. Um, this blue line you see on the is their property boundary for their job. Um, so that's a, it's a really nice map. So, you know, if you wanted to change this around a little bit, you could go and turn off the labels and print it in different ways to move labels around just to make it look a little more presentable for your customers. Here's another example. I think this is a similar example where this customer uh, also did another kind of large townhome development. They went out and mapped different control valves and uh, different types of, uh, of assets. Let's turn on some labels. And if we zoom in on some of this stuff, this customer was also asked to go through and identify what trees on the property uh, required removal. So they went through and identified all of those for future uh, removal of those trees. Here's another project. This customer chose to kind of present their, their information without mapping areas for their zones, but just showing all of the laterals and the different uh, sprinkler heads that are associated to those laterals. Uh, this was a very large project uh, in that they had about 72 controllers. And so they actually chose to separate out each of those controllers by uh, separate uh, uh, projects within the software. So this is just one of 72 in a really large uh, development. Um, I think it goes like way out through all of these, these different places. And the last one I was hoping to share um, is just a very similar example um, where, you know, if the customer here, they wanted to go and turn off, um, turn off these, they could actually go turn off the labels, print their map, just like we did before. I'll make it kind of a quick export for the sake of time. And you see the customer project with its all of its different assets. So hopefully this gives you kind of an idea that you can visualize how this could be applied for your specific job. Um, and for the types of work that you do. And again, uh, once where how this works is if you if you if you get this software, we're here to help you with tech support, but also to help give you a boost training. It typically takes about an hour of online training, and we can get your forms uh, matched and help you match those forms to your workflow and give you the hardware training so that you're up and running. And um, these jobs that you see were customers that were trained in a very quick way and we're out and mapping their projects the next day. So um, thanks a lot for uh, checking out this demo. If you do have further questions, um, certainly there's a lot of other features um, in the software I'd love to share. And if you have other questions, please please note those in the GoToMeeting. So I'll just turn it over to Doug again for some closing remarks. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, really appreciate you showing the software. We're, we, we really have uh, loved using this software. It's been such a great tool. You know, we've created a lot of things in there that make it really great, and Trevor only scratched the surface. You know, there's there's other things that we can show you as you need, and uh, appreciate some of the questions that came up, and we'll be getting back with you on answers with those. But uh, here's the contact information for Trevor and myself, and uh, we would love to hear anything that you have to say. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're really excited to get this out there to, to many of you and, and let you see how great it is to have these really excellent maps built that uh, make your job easier and increase your ability to be profitable in, in what you're working on. Uh, with that, we'll uh, leave it and thank you for your time today.